go live. Hopefully it's like perfect at three o'clock. Oh, it's a little early. So um, interesting thing. I was I stopped hosting this in my in my Google Drive. I stopped posting the videos in there and instead I've I started throwing them up on on YouTube because I just figured it's just easier to upload it. And at first I had, oh, I'll just leave the comments on, whatever. Um, and then you get all these people who are like, hey, do you want to be YouTube friends? And all these spams. And I, I was like, oh, wow, people like what I'm posting. And then I realized it's just all these accounts. So anyway, that's not a big deal. That's, that's oh, woe is me. But uh, I very much appreciate uh, you guys coming out for today. So, so what I did today is I cut or I took uh, a, a few pictures, a few videos of, uh, of <laughs> my son washing his hands. And so we're going to do a quick uh, tutorial on washing your hands and uh, just show you how to work with some of the, the clips and stuff inside of uh, inside a Wii video. I want to, for anybody who hasn't already claimed a license or is not sure if they have the uh, the Premier features or not, I'm posting just in, in the uh, chat window the, the form. You can fill this out as you're like now or later, uh, no big deal you'll get an automatic email back that basically says, here's the uh, account code that you need. So I know lots of people have been using it uh, and I'm gonna share with you afterwards a, uh, a video that, that one of our teachers has, have made um, and he said I could share it with WeVideo. He's a pretty, uh, uh, he's a pretty committed guy to desktop applications, so he's he, he's okay. He's open to it, but you got to convince him that it, it serves more purpose than cloud-based ones. And he was impressed by the the feature set inside of here. So, so let's get right down to it. I'm going to present my window, and uh, we'll take a look at Wii Video. So, over the past, I would say two days here. Um. They've actually added on um, a couple features. So one, and I just saw this last week, was the ability to create a, a, a GIF, a GIF uh, inside of here. And then the other one that just came in uh, this morning when I logged in, I was logged in yesterday and it just popped in this morning, was the ability to just create a podcast. So these are just buttons and they all take you to the exact same platform. But I find it interesting that they're continuing to add that functionality and see what, what people are using for. I've really been pushing WeVideo as our multimedia sort of platform because I figure the more people that we can get to use it, uh, the more licenses we can pot potentially get, the more ideas we get out there for these that you guys share between each other um, for using this. And uh, it does almost well. It does anything from podcasting, obviously, to videos. And so that's kind of what we need and screencasting. Yeah, absolutely, Stephanie. Um, we uh, we normally have about 200 licenses, and uh, we yeah we normally have about 200 licenses that I kind of loan out. So I have the ability. I have an admin panel up here um, that that allows me to control who gets access and who doesn't. So essentially, sign up for a free account with your kids, and then or don't. Um, but let me know how many licenses you need. Give me a list. I import it in there, send them the links that they need, and then they get access. And then essentially I follow up in about a month and say, hey, are you done with the project? If you say yes, I just turn off their access and we recover those licenses. So that way we don't have to expend a huge amount of money for a division-wide license, um, but we try and make sure that everybody gets access. Well, COVID-19 is going on here. They've uh, I went and it claimed about another 2,000 licenses. So we have more than enough to cover. Yeah, actually all of our staff, all of our students and a few more to spare. So I just threw out that number with them and they didn't even flinch at it, which was brilliant. And, uh, and so it's awesome at this time, but yeah, absolutely. So, okay, I already uploaded the videos. We talked about how to do that before. Um, if you do want a quick remembrance, it's in your media section here. And then down in the bottom, we're gonna go to plus and we're gonna import and that's where we drop the media. So I do all of my work from a Chromebook, which means that my Google Drive is essentially a map drive in here. So it acts like a C drive or an H drive or anything like that on your Windows desktop if you're using Windows desktop or on your Mac or something like that. So because of that, I record on my, uh, on my phone and then I drop it from my phone over to uh, my Google Drive when I'm connected to Wi-Fi. And then I just upload from my Google Drive directly into here. I know that there's shortcuts. I know there's apps out there 
that will allow you to, to jump the step in anything. To me, I just find it a little bit simpler, but all the video that I take is always on my phone. Uh, I just find it the easiest system to use. And it's a camera that I have right beside me. So I'm gonna go back to our dashboard here. We're gonna create a new video. This is just asking us where we wanna start it. So we're just gonna get start editing, okay? I'm gonna start with a blank one. I didn't use a template or anything like that. I'm actually gonna stop presenting because I want to, uh, yeah, I'm gonna do this. This was my planning document um, for uh, this video. So it's, it's not really a storyboard. I sort of planned out what I wanted to do, but essentially you are gonna spend way more time planning and way more time editing then you do actually the fun part. And that's where I, you know, whenever I work with kids on this, they get so frustrated because they want to start jumping right in and creating that viral video. And they want to just film and plan on the fly and do it all guerrilla style and everything like that. The problem with that is you kind of lose out on, uh, on all the details, like a potential script and where your idea changes too fluidly. So, so I have mine. The very first thing I always suggest that you do is rename your videos. So mine came in with this format. I'm gonna zoom in here if I can. Oh, it's not gonna let me zoom. Oh, there we go. So mine came in with this format, vid underscore the date underscore the time that I recorded it. And what I did is I, first of, first of all, I uploaded them all, you could rename them before, but if you right click on it, you can jump into rename and then you're good. You can, uh, you can get them in there. That's gonna be easy and it's gonna save you a whole bunch of time from jumping back and forth to, uh, was this a clip I wanted or was this a clip? And you don't necessarily recognize what's going on. Okay, number two thing that I did. I know I'm gonna have a couple of uh, frames in here, a couple tracks. So I'm gonna make my preview window smaller and I'm gonna make my tracks bigger. So by clicking this drop down, I'm gonna run out of room here. My audio one isn't so important, but I get the ability to have that. Now, I'm not super concerned about this because I am gonna eliminate the audio, but I wanna show you how it's easier to work with with you have a slightly bigger track. Um, and then we can start pulling in the information that we want. So. The way that my video goes, and I'm just gonna grab this information and drop it in. I'm gonna grab my three pieces, and this is the last one. And just drag it and drop it in there. Now, if you're just getting started on this, you may be in the different timeline. So one of the things to check to is make sure you're on story or on uh, timeline mode and not storyboard mode. Timeline mode gives you the ability to have multiple frames or multiple tracks, excuse me. Storyboard mode is all on one um, frame and we don't wanna do that. Now, I'm gonna rewind to the back of this. And if we hit play, you guys can't hear the audio, but at that point right there, I said action. And so, that's when I want to watch. You can see the audio track there. If you see, there was a spike there in the audio because it was silent up until that point. That's where I'm gonna cut it. There's two ways to deal with clips here. Way number one, because I know I'm not gonna use anything before, is to cut that clip. So now I've taken my one clip and I'm gonna zo I'll zoom in a bit here. Sometimes it's useful to zoom in with this little slider so you can get a little bit more detail with regards to these two. Actually, let's move that back a little bit. I can see that action ends somewhere right around there, just based on my audio. So I'm gonna cut it right there. So if I cut it, what I can actually do is just click on that track and then click delete and it eliminates that. Actually, we need to uh, take a quick moment here. Mike Sad, happy birthday, sir. Thank you for spending some time with us. Mike just joined here. He turned uh, 29 again this year, in my understanding, so. That's awesome, man. <laughs> um, okay, so we're gonna jump in here. We did a quick cut there and it allows us now to see it. I spend a ton of time doing cuts and then coming and making sure I have everything set up here. Boom, maybe I wanna cut it there and I'm gonna cut it again. 
but maybe I want to use that bit at the end. So another thing you can do, if you click on your track and you see it up here in the preview, but we can also do it down here using the double arrows. But in the preview, I can trim and drag in. So I can shorten my track just by trimming inside of here and I can cut it down. Now notice all it did is took that track and it pulled it in, but it actually saved the whole track. So what I did before where I deleted it, it eliminated that part of the track completely and I can't get it back. This way, if I wanna add some more of that in there, I can always add a little bit more in. So then I generally rewind all the way to the beginning. I see my tracks actually move, so I'm gonna bring it all the way back to the beginning and then I'll click a quick preview and make sure everything is good. All right, I know that I'm not gonna use the audio from this track, so if I wanted, I could mute it. You guys can't hear it, but I can hear it on my end, all my kids talking in the background. Then I'm gonna bring in my next one, and it appears to me that this is probably where I said action. So I'm gonna bring it to about there, and again, I know I'm not gonna do anything. We're not gonna get super specific now, um, but I'm gonna drag it all the way back to there. Let's see what we have going on here. This is probably the seat shutting, and maybe we don't wanna go too, too far. I'm gonna cut that, delete there, and then finally, I do have one more track over here that I'm gonna bring forward. Looking at the audio, I can see again where I said, action i'm going to bring it right to there i'm going to cut it delete that track and bring it all back here and again if i now rewind all the way to the very beginning and if you want to see we can view the quick preview of what that track is just to make sure that everything's good and looking good and then we have the perfect now oh pause that we don't need to replay that now it's time to wash our hands so now that i have that all set i have my kind of pre little role before my title now i'm going to go in and i'm going to bring in a title so i'm going to pop back up here and there's a whole bunch we can do i'm going to click on text and there's a bunch of different ones that you have so motion is obviously stuff moving static is static in season I don't even know what that is. Oh, we got some stuff going on with graduation, so that must be seasonal stuff. And then callouts are overlays. So callouts is where we can pull something out and just highlight one of the little pieces. We can actually maybe use a callout later, but for right now, we're just gonna keep these. So I'm gonna pop up to a static one, and I'm going to grab, let's just use the project card here. We'll drop this in here. And actually, I'm gonna drop this into video one. So video two, let's use this for clips. And video one, just double clicking to edit here. Let's use this for titles. And now we can start to keep our project all sorted. So we're gonna go to our uh, title. We used our project card. I'm gonna double click on that and it allows us to bring in our different properties here that we wanna do. So, you know what, this is kind of a lame title, but that's okay. Now it's time to wash our hands. There's some way better ones for sure. Some of the, the moving ones are way nicer. You have full uh, formatting do whatever you need with regards to that. Make our size a little bit bigger. We can also adjust it up here if we want. And then we get that title. We'll click Save Changes here, and then we're gonna pop down. And if we just, if we just arrow over it, you'll see there's a little pop-up that came here that says Project Card, eight seconds. So eight seconds in this case is probably a little bit too long for my title. I'm just gonna shrink this down a little bit so I can see the end of my title. We could have also just clicked on it and grabbed it up here. 
and brought it all the way down. Let's see what we can do here. Now, instead of eight seconds, we have about a second and a half. Maybe that's a little short. I'm going to expand it. So I'm going to use the double arrow here. I highlighted that double arrow and I'm going to bring it out 216. Let's say three seconds. We'll go roughly three about there and then it's good. It's done. Now we can start bringing in the other information. I have another one here where I have the steps to wash your hands. So maybe we're going to put those in as end credits. I'm going to click on that. We can add additional ones. Maybe we go step number one. We'll copy that so we can paste it later. Later is water. Step number two, soap. Step number three, uh, scrub. Step number four, uh, there's a reason behind my, my madness here. And step number five is dry. What I'm gonna do, because my first step is this one here, is I'm actually going to bold that. So. What that allows me to do is I'm gonna to continue to reuse this one again and again. I'm just gonna copy and paste it throughout. And I'm just gonna change the bolding to highlight the different steps. So that way we have that little bit of consistency in there. We can copy and paste just like anybody else. Um, there's that little bit in there that allows us to use and it's kind of nice. We could do some more uh, trimming and stuff like that. It w sorry, some more formatting with regards to that text, but. We're not going to worry about that. And I'm going to bring that to about two seconds. There we go. So now we got it. We have our intro. We have our title. We have our first section. Let's bring in the water. Let's go back to my media. And it's just pulling down clips and entering here. So water on. I'm going to bring in water on. I can see again here where action came. Let's put it right there. Let's cut that. I'm not going to use that at the beginning. I have over on this side here, this setting right here says snap clips to other clips in the timeline. What that actually does is when I get close, it jumps so they're together. If we wanted there to be an overlap, you can still have an overlap. We could drag that a little bit beyond, but it's just kind of a helper when you get close to make sure that it's all aligned nicely. I'm gonna put a little bit of water in here and maybe we'll cut it here i'm not going to be too too sticky on this one. Oh, maybe i will be i want to get rid of uh no i don't want the soap yet let's bring it back just a bit and then cut it maybe somewhere around there Perfect. I'm going to cut that one because I don't want to use the soap after. We're just kind of doing it for fun anyway. Now I can go back in and I can grab those end, end credits. I do a control C to copy it. And then I'm going to do a control V. Oops. We can't place it there. We got to bring and it paste it wherever our little blue line is, wherever our playhead is here. So if we paste it, boom, it goes right in there. I can double click. I'm going to take the bold off of this one and I'm going to move the bold down to soap. Save the changes. Uh, we should probably edit that. That one's really big. So something's going on there. Got to go in and sort of change that. Let's go back to this one and let's just see when we click on that. Uh, we have a slightly big 67 and this guy is 48. So. When we go to our next one, kind of like that idea. So let's set this one to 48. And that one to 67. We could change the, the text color, whatever we want. 
and save. And now, I mean, we've been in here for a few minutes, but if we just quickly play it, a little bit of, of motion probably wouldn't hurt there. And we can jump through. You can fade in and out. You can look at your transitions if you want. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the transitions, but you can fade in and out. You just need a little bit more video time to do those fades nicely instead of the hard chops. But again, um, it really depends on what you want. So let's pretend we're all good and done. We're uh, 20 minutes in here, and uh, let's say that we're happy with this. The next thing I might want to do is go and grab some audio. So obviously washing some hands, we want the moment of inspiration in here, maybe some clear inspiration. Uh, you guys can play with that, figure out what you want. I'm gonna drag this back to the beginning and I'm gonna drag that down to my audio track here. Now, if you could hear, we would get that audio soundtrack going in the background. Maybe we don't wanna start out with a hard in. We don't want it to start right away. Maybe we want it to fade in. So I'm gonna take that volume and actually I'm gonna reduce the entire volume from 100, maybe down to 50, because I'm gonna do a narration over top of this. And even there, I want it to start down low and then I'm going to, oops. Oh, there we go, I've got my white dot. Then I'm gonna bring that back up to 100% and we can pick how long we want our audio to fade in at. And on the other end, uh, we don't need to worry about it right now. I would cut it and I would fade it out as well probably. So I mean, really it depends on what you wanna do, but you have the ability to do that. At any point, you can also set another one and you can drop it up and down there. So if we wanted to fade it down here to 34%, it's gonna fade it down there. And for the rest of that, it would be at that level. So if you do have audio that's a little bit loud, sound that's a little bit loud, and you maybe wanna trim that down. Maybe we don't wanna cut this out all the way. We just wanna trim it down. Um, you could do that and then bring it back up later when the narration is gone, or if you have a soundtrack or something like that. Excuse me, if you have kids that are recording with a GoPro or something like that, recording outside in the wind and the weather, there's gonna be a lot of microphone hiss, so you're gonna to wanna to do voiceovers and probably reduce that sound or eliminate the sound from that track. So with my clips one, the way that we do that, is we just click on the three dots and we mute that track. Now we don't hear that track at all. And the only one we'll hear is this guy right here. So we've established some tracks. We've started to edit them, put a couple of them together. We have some of our um, titles and stuff like that in there. We have the ability to copy it if we want. Last thing we need to do is we're gonna add a little bit of narration on this. So we're gonna go back to my media and here's our narrate. We also have a record. Actually, we should hit on that really quickly. We also have a record. So those of you who have been using Screencastify or uh, Loom or um, what's one of the other ones? Uh, ah, it totally escapes me. It was on the tip of my tongue. Um, you can also do screen recording from here. So inside of here, if we clicked on record, you record the webcam, the screen, or both. So again, if your kids wanna to narrate to this, they can just record the webcam. If you wanna do a, uh, a tutorial of how to use some software, you probably wanna record both of them and then switch in between. So cut up the different clips and make some of them uh, not visible and others out in front. Again, depending on how much work you wanna do, we can do that as well. Uh, but what we wanna do is we wanna record a narration. So I'm gonna go all the way back to the beginning I'm gonna click on narrate, and it's going to allow me to record. So mute video while recording, yes, I don't need to hear that, or if I do wanna hear the soundtrack so I can you know, put the proper inflection into my voice, we can also have that. But what we'll do is we'll start and we'll just hit record. It counts us in. I have a, uh, a script that I've laid out. I strongly suggest that you do. It's recording already, I should stop talking. But I strongly suggest that you also have a script, otherwise you're gonna get a lot of uh, mm, uh, uh. You're probably gonna record this two or three times. After your hands are wet, oops. Start by turn, oh, hold on. Let's see, let's stop, let's, let's eliminate that. We're gonna record again. You guys threw me off here. Are you sure? Yes, easy to do, counts us back in. And again, like I was saying, having that script and practicing it before. You don't have to practice it live, but practicing it before is an easy way. 
we'll just wait. We can eliminate this audio later anyway. We had our title. Start by turning on the taps and getting the temperature set to a comfortable but warm temperature. After your hands are wet, get some soap on them. And it's going to keep going, even though we don't have a uh, video there, it's going to keep recording until we're done our audio. So we can record this in advance if we want. We can record it after if we want. Once we're all done, we can say stop. We can listen to it so we can preview it. And it's going to play the video while we have our audio to make sure it matches up. Once we're happy, we'll click save. And we're going to see another track down here that says voiceover. So voiceover, we want to make sure probably is a little bit louder than the audio so we don't have that really weird bit. And then again, like we were talking about, I think that it was somewhere right around here. Well, let's see. Just press play. So it was this one right here where I really started to uh, to do my audio. So I want to eliminate all that stuff out front. Again, I can use any of the methods. I could cut it and delete that, and then boom, that's all good. I could go back to the beginning and trim it all the way back there just in case. I could leave it, dropping the volume down to zero there, and I'm going to put in a couple fades here, and bringing it all the way back up right there. There's a whole bunch of ways. Now, I would suggest, Ahmed, I saw you had a question. I'm going to get to that in just a second here. I just want to finish my thought. I would suggest that if you have a lot of clips and a longer video, that you don't leave all this extra stuff that's just hanging out. The more content you have in there, the bigger your file is going to be in the end and the harder it needs to work to, to process it and everything. These guys are solid. They can push some pretty heavy stuff. You are gonna run into limitations with, with some bigger files and everything. It will slow down and it will process slower because it, you know, it literally has to go to space and back uh and then somebody's running a server somewhere and depending on how many people are hitting it at that time how much software time you can get you'll also see a difference in your preview if you have really big files it'll stutter a little bit more um but if you can clean up some of the stuff that you're not using it's an easy way to do uh to make your files a little bit smaller so just gonna pop in here is there a limit on how long the recording in some gaps give you a specific time for recording? For example, five minutes. I haven't run into a limit on this one, but I don't record really long files. I know that with some of the software we run on here, there's a uh, 15 minute limit. And that has to do more with the hardware and Chrome OS not allowing you to exceed that 15 minute limit. Um, I think if you're recording straight for 15 minutes, maybe you want to take a break at some point and just restart it. Uh, you can record multiple tracks and you can do that, um, but I haven't. I will take a look and see if I can't find that because I'm sure there there is some documentation about the limit, and I bet you I've even looked it up before. So Once we're all done, this is the easy part. We've done everything we need to do. We click Finish, and it's going to say Set a Title. We'll just set that. It's going to say How do you want to export it, and again, if we're doing a video, we want video. If we're doing a podcast, we're going to say audio only, and it'll just spit out the audio file for us. Super simple way to do that. If we are under 45 seconds and we just, you know, we're just demonstrating some simple concept, uh, we could do a GIF or a GIF, right? Gives us the error that we're too long here. Our edit exceeds 45 second limit for GIFs. Please go back and shorten the duration. And that's that's a file format type issue. But we'll go back to our video. And we'll say, do we want to do it in SD or HD? Depending on what you want to do, uh, it's going to be a bigger file size in HD than it will be in SD. But we're also used to that that nice clear video. Uh, if you're posting small videos, you, SD is probably going to be good enough. But we'll do a HD, um, and then it's going to ask us for a thumbnail. 
I don't have any good thumbnails here. Uh, I don't have that many options for it to choose from. So, I mean, not a big deal there, but you can choose a thumbnail for your video. That one you can also change when you throw it into YouTube or something like that. So that's not the worst deal in the world. Uh, for the destinations, by default, download is selected. That's gonna download it locally. I've also connected this to my Google Drive, so I can connect it straight to Google. You can also push it up to YouTube if you want directly from inside of here, all of these options. These ones, I can't remember if I have all of these turned on. I have a bunch turned on here. For me, I should probably turn them off. For teachers, I have uh, only some of them. If there's a service that you want, you use Vimeo and it's not available to us or to you, let me know. I can turn on that service to be able to do that. We like to kind of keep things in-house but uh, it's not the worst thing in the world to have some of these services turned on. Once we do that, I don't want it to be public. We just click export. Now it's gonna give us our options here. As it's queuing up here, um, we can close this window. It's gonna send us an email right when it's all done. It's gonna take a while to process, but we can, uh, we can either go back and start another project. We can keep working on the project that we have, or we can just walk away from it. It'll send us an email later. It's gonna, because I selected uh, Google Drive, it's going to download into my Google Drive automatically. It's also gonna post to my YouTube channel automatically. I should uh, stop sharing my screen here. It's gonna post up to my YouTube channel automatically, so that means I don't have to worry about it. I will wanna go in later and check all my settings set everything properly if that's what you're using. If it's in your drive, you'll want to adjust the sharing settings for your students and stuff like that. And when I go into my exports, this is where they will be. You'll be able to pull them down. So I have a couple of different exports in here and you can pull those down from in here by clicking on it. Uh, let's open up this one. And up here we have the download option. So I can download it and it's gonna give me the download option for where do I wanna store it locally. Once you have it there, Bob's your uncle, you can do with what you need. So, um, so that is that. I did say, and, and I'm gonna stick around for any questions that you might have as well. But I did say that I wanted to share a piece of work here uh, that was done. This was done by Michael Willems. He's a teacher at R.I. Baker. Uh, this is a guy that I said up front, He's a little, not, you know, he likes his desktop platform. He likes his windows and he likes to use um, software. He, he's open, <laughs> he tries a bunch of stuff, but he doesn't just jump in and go, this is the best thing in the world. And he sent me an email today and said, you know, he may have convinced him with this cloud-based stuff. He's a, he's a great guy, does lots of, of really uh, interesting stuff online um, and, and with technology and everything. And he created this one using uh, Wii Video. So I don't know something to shoot for, something to give it a try with. I see in my, I'll present, I know I said I was done, but I'm gonna share my window one more time here. And up in the uh, notifications, it tells me that my video is ready. So I could jump in and download it and get going from there. But. But that is, you know, the nickel tour of kind of working with clips in there. I hope that was a little bit more productive than the last one. The last one was a really quick overview. I hope this one was more into how to do it. It really depends on how much time you want to invest in it and what you want going on. So I'm going to be quiet now and I will stop the recording and stop the streaming. And if you guys have any questions, fire them in.